Well, welcome back to Remote Sensing Applications Using ArcGIS. In this session, we'll cover the display of 8-bit or 1-byte grayscale or panchromatic images. An example may be you've got grayscale aerial photography from the 1940s or 1950s, or you have single-band high-resolution satellite imagery, and you want to display those types of grayscale images. Okay, so there's eight bits in one byte, and with eight bits, it's possible to represent whole numbers ranging from 0 to 255. So the easiest way to explain that is if you pull up the calculator in Windows, we could have a one-bit image, so 0 represents the number 0 and 1 represents the number 1. We could also have a two-bit image, so for a two-bit image, if we click on binary, let's say our first bit is zero and our next bit is one. Actually, both bits are one. So the first bit is representing the number one. The next bit is representing the number two. So one plus two will equal three. So if we click on what is the decimal representation of this two bit, it is the value of three. Now, if we go back to binary and let's say we want one zero, so that would represent the number two. So the first bit is off, the next bit is on, which is representing the number two. So if we click on what is that in decimal, it is the number two. So basically, if we have all bits on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bits are all turned on. What does that represent in terms of a decimal number? It represents the number 255. And if all bits are off, so if we go back to binary and turn those all to off, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, what is that in decimal? It is zero. So it's possible to represent any number between 0 and 255 using 8 bits. So for example, in decimal, let's say we've got the value 250. What is that in terms of 8 bits? So if we click on binary, this is what it's in terms of 8 bits. So the first bit is turned off, the next bit is turned on, the next bit is turned off, and the remaining bits are turned on. So you can figure out for any decimal value what is the sequence of 8 bits to turn on and off to represent that decimal value. Okay, so we're going to deal with 8-bit images in this session. So they will have values ranging from 0 to 255. So 255, binary, all 8 bits are turned on. Okay, so from our last video session, you downloaded some data from the NRM641 website, and you'll have an image called panimage.bil. This is an 8-bit grayscale image or panchromatic image, and what we need to do is make a companion file that will describe the content of this raster. So we'll just use a text editor, and we'll call it the same first name, and then an extension .hdr. And then what we're going to do is use a text editor to enter the keywords and values for this raster. So I will open that with Notepad. And then the number of rows for this raster is 2,600. And the number of columns for this raster is 3,400. And then the number of bits. So there's eight bits or one byte. And there's one pixel value for each pixel. So that would be the number of bands. And then we can just save this. So now we can read in this raster, panimage.bil, using ArcMap. 
So it says unknown spatial reference, so that's okay for now. So then we can turn on our image. Okay, so what we see is a very strange image, and the reason is it's common for the user to incorrectly put information in the header file. So what we need to do is look at our header file and see does it make sense in terms of the values that we entered in the header file, which are describing how this image is stored on the hard drive. Okay, so typically the best thing to do is first check is the size of your BIL image matching the number of rows times the number of columns times the number of bytes. So there's one byte and eight bits. So in this example, it would be 2,600 rows times 3,400 columns times one byte per pixel. So eight bits is the same thing as one byte. So the size of our raster should be 8840000 bytes. So we'll check that. So if we right mouse click on our raster and go to properties, the size is indeed 8840000 bytes. So that checks out. Okay, the other common mistake is to mix up the number of rows and the number of columns. So let's try changing the number of rows and number of columns. So the number of rows will become 3,400 and the number of columns will become 2,600. And then we'll save that header file describing our BIL raster. And then we'll see what happens when we load it in ArcMap. So we'll try it with this new header file and unknown spatial reference is okay for now. And then now we've got a raster which basically appears correct. Okay, you can display panchromatic or grayscale images with a variety of contrast stretches. So at first what we'll do is we'll have no stretch. So each pixel value will control the brightness of the level of gray in the image. So let's zoom in on Alaska's largest lake, Lake Iliamna. And these water pixels are fairly dark, so they'll be have a low pixel value. So if we look at, for example, this water pixel, it has a value of 22, and that's the stretch value that's being used to display that pixel as opposed to some of these snow covered areas they have a value of 237 and that's the stretch value that you're seeing on the screen is 237. You can change that by going to symbology and for example we can go okay let's use standard deviation. So let's go the mean plus or minus one standard deviation. So if you're less than one standard deviation away from the mean, you'll be stretched, those pixels will be black. And if you're one standard deviation or above the mean, those pixels will be bright white. So that will enhance the contrast for the entire image. So now we've got the entire image has a much higher contrast. Everything that you see in bright white is one standard deviation or above away from the mean and everything that you see that's really dark black is one standard deviation or below the mean. And once again you could change that so if we go to properties let's change it to three standard deviations. So what that means is all those pixels that are three standard deviations away from the mean less than the mean would be jet black all those pixels that are three, three standard deviations above the mean will be bright white. So you get a totally different contrast. So let's zoom in on Lake Iliamna, which is the largest lake in the state of Alaska. And say you want to see a better contrast for the dark water pixels. What you could do is go to properties and for symbology, 
change it to custom. Custom settings do our contrast enhancement from 18 will be jet black and 50 will be bright white. And then we'll make the mean and standard deviation irrelevant. So that enhances the contrast of the water, but then everything that's above a value of 50 becomes bright white. And then if we go down to Cook Inlet, you can see, for example, this area is ranging up to 50, so you see contrast. So we can change that and then click on Apply, and then basically this area has less contrast. So you can manipulate the contrast of images by just going to properties and then settings. So you can do standard deviations, um, one, two, three, or whatever values you want, or you could specify your own custom contrast enhancement. And then basically you can do it from your custom setup, or you can just say, well, use the current displayed extent and then apply some stretch just for the current displayed extent. So now if I zoom in for every current displayed extent, it does the contrast enhancement for me. Okay, and you can also make any panchromatic image appear as a negative if you just click on the invert button. So here's the Cook Inlet area with Anchorage. And what we could do is we're going to do a one standard deviation contrast stretch, except we're going to say invert. So what that means is values with low pixel values would become bright in the display, and pixels with high values will become dark in the display. So I just move this over to the side and then click Apply. And basically what you get is a negative type image.